Good evening. So this is the first support video for writing skills for English 067 and here we go. So today we're going to talk about two different aspects of writing that are really important to a lot of the assignments that we will complete this semester. The first half is a general discussion of the successful process of writing going through each of the steps that you should you should be aware of and and should be using whenever you tackle a writing assignment that might be for writing essays it it might also be for paragraphs we will do both in this level and then the second half will look at how we can write paragraphs successfully so i've kind of given the subtitle here of two mini lectures for the price of one so we'll go move into the first topic now so whenever you're writing an assignment, having a correct process to complete the assignment is a, is a solid strategy. So the very first thing you need to do is select the topic that speaks to you. Writing something that you don't have any passion for is, is not going to be an easy task. So one of the famous phrases that we hear is, write what you know. I would say that you could equally make the same type of a, an axiom of write something you have a passionate connection to. If you can bring your interest, your passion, and your intelligence all together to bear on your topic, you're going to be more committed to the process, and inevitably your voice will be more true to who you are as a writer. And achieving that voice uh, is a really important focal point for any writer. And uh, that, 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 that makes sense for uh, writing for academic assignments, but also creatively writing. You know, try to connect with what you're doing. So uh, step two is the brainstorming process. There's a few different text techniques you can use. You can use a, a mind map where you have your, your main topic point in the middle. And then as the ideas come to you, they spin off. You draw a line and make a bubble and put the ideas there. And you kind of have one branch talking about the first category. And then as you go, the page uh, gets covered by, by a map of ideas, by, a, by kind of a web of ideas. The second brainstorming strategy that I promote is called a T-chart. And T-charts are useful for comparison and contrast. Um, basically, you draw a line down the middle, a line across the top, and then you put one side of your, of your topic or your idea on the left-hand side and the other on the right. And then you put all the ideas that are affiliated with that first um, focal point down, down underneath that column and the same under the, under the second column. After brainstorming, you, you want to start your outlining and planning phase. Basically, what you're doing here is you've, you've already kind of generated a lot of the ideas. Now you're organizing them into categories, and your goal is to come up with a, a skeleton or, or, or a general structure that you're going to follow, and that would be an outline. Next, we're going to go into uh, creating your academic word bank. So one thing that I see when I'm marking students' papers is they will get caught in the pattern of using the same words in, in each of their paragraphs. This would cost you a deduction um, for repetitive writing. So right at the beginning, you know, if you're talking about, let's say, old growth forests and protecting them or the logging industry, which is the, the, the first topic that we've been looking at together, and you've been doing some readings uh, on those issues, you might want to build out a synonym list for words like sustainable, you know, conservation, protected areas. You, you build a synonym kind of bank or team of words that, that are connected to that core idea. And you do this for words that you think will be used repetitively in your essay. And if you do, when you're editing, if you notice words that are repetitive, or even if you're working in a peer editing situation, you should highlight those words and say, find a synonym for yourself or for your partner. And you can kind of preempt that need by building your word bank at the, at the step four of the writing process. Step five is a very important step here because we're moving into the actual drafting. Now, there are a number of different philosophies about how to best draft a paper. I believe that once you start writing, you should try to build momentum. So let's say you're struggling with your background sentences in your introduction of your essay. 
an introduction should have a hook sentence that catches attention, then it should have two to three background sentences that frame the relevance of the topic but don't give away too many of your details, and then finally your thesis statement. Now let's say you got your hook and you've got your thesis and you're kind of stuck on those background sentences. Some students would allow that to paralyze them. I don't think that's a good strategy. Instead, I would say move forward into your main body, paragraph number one, and continue writing. Build your momentum. You'll find that when you come back later, uh, the, the writer's block might naturally resolve itself because you've kind of pushed on, you've given yourself that mental space, and now you might have something uh, relevant to say to complete that those two or three background sentences that you need to kind of fill out the length of your introduction. So write through blocks by jumping ahead might be the kind of concrete advice there. You should try to complete your first draft uh, within a 24 to 48 hour period of time, I would say, because if you have too much time between initially sitting down on draft one, it, what actually happens is there isn't real consistency in the voice, in kind of your the flow or the, the connection between your ideas. So I, I think that, you know, kind of block off that main writing time and then really try to apply yourself to completing the draft is, is a good strategy. Step six is a really important step too, although it sometimes gets left out, and this is the soak time phase. Basically what this is, is you give yourself a break from writing. So you've, you've, you've kind of really gone at it diligently here to get through these first five steps, or at least as a writer, I usually do. I kind of look at my topic, I do my brainstorming, I build that skeleton, I think about some words I might want to use, and then I jump into the drafting for draft one. When you finish that draft one, you should give yourself 24 hours again, or 48 hours maybe even that much time might be uh, useful, to not work on the paper. And I even promote, to, like even if you're in, under a real pressure for time situation and you will have to come back to it fairly soon, then I would say go out and do something different, right? Like change your task, go, go to the forest, go for a walk, do some exercise, do something fun for yourself, cook some great food, then come back to it and you'll find that by giving yourself that mental break, by moving away from it, you might now see your, your writing with, with new eyes, with a fresh look. And this will often help students move from wearing that writing hat to wearing the editing hat. And, and the, the two skills, although they are connected, they are different. So soak time can help you to kind of achieve that ob objectivity. Then, you, then you're going to come back after your soak and you're going to revise for draft two and finally submit your paper. So in a nutshell, that is the writing process. It's good to kind of have an idea of the steps because it also helps you to see where you are, kind of how you're progressing um, through the body of your work.